Let's invite Angela Larson from the Department of Biology. The topic of Angela's research is how do behavioral alterations drive population and community dynamics of rodents in heterogeneous habitat types? As a country, we know that we need to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels and reduce our carbon emissions. One way to do both of these things is to use biofuels. Biofuel feedstocks are the plants that can be grown, harvested, and converted into biofuels. One biofuel feedstock you're likely all familiar with is corn. Unfortunately, corn is not a sustainable biofuel feedstock long term because it has to be grown on land that can be used for food crops for our growing human population. And so another biofuel feedstock that's actually a newcomer to this is switchgrass. Switchgrass is a native grass that can be planted in place of a native grassland. Unfortunately, previous studies have already shown that wildlife diversity is reduced when we plant switchgrass as a monoculture, when you compare it to those native grasslands. So an alternative to planting switchgrass is actually using a system called intercropping. Intercropping is when they plant two crops in the same area. And at the field study that I work at, they're actually intercropping switchgrass in pine plantations. But we need to understand if that intercropping system is going to be sustainable long term. So we're going to investigate how that's affecting the wildlife biodiversity, the number of species found in this area. And my research in particular is focusing on rodents. These are the rats and mice. These are key to any ecosystem because they're a prey item for several predators, and they also disperse seeds and reduce pest populations. So I'm looking at how their individual behaviors, particularly using cotton rats as my model species, because that's my dominant animal that I capture, I'm using their individual behaviors to try to see how are they driving the other population. So the population is talking about their species, the abundance, so their juveniles, how many sub-adults are in the area, how many adults are in the area. I then hope to go up to the community level. So talking about the different populations of different species all within that area. That's really driving at that biodiversity question. So this model will allow me to, again, show how individual behaviors are driving the population and how the populations are driving the communities. From this, I can then simulate into future years. These simulated outcomes will allow us to understand how sustainable this intercropping system is. And if we can, in fact, use areas between those pine rows in traditionally managed pine plantations to plant switchgrass as a biofuel feedstock. This is using land that is not actually using any land that would instead be used for food crops for our growing human population. So it seems sustainable, but again, we need to understand if the wildlife biodiversity is being affected. Thank you.